This is a 2021 Bentley Flying Spur V8. A $265,000 car that make houses look stupid. My name is Robin Warner, an experienced engineer and magazine editor, and I want to tell you more about it. What is a Bentley Flying Spur V8? It is quite simply the epitome of old money luxury and bespoke customization to emphasize your individual tastes and style. It's also a car. The Bentley Flying Spur is the lower of two trims in the sense that it houses the smaller, less expensive, and less powerful of two engines offered. But the concept of trims is lost on Bentley because everyone is built to be different from the last, unique and catered to the owner's preferences. And the V8 offers real advantages to the larger, more powerful W12, but we'll get to more of that later. With that in mind, the Bentley Flying Spur is powered by an inline five cylinder, I'm kidding! It is powered by a twin turbocharged four liter V8 engine producing a peak output of 542 horsepower and 568 pound feet of torque. That power then goes through an eight speed dual clutch transmission and on to all four wheels. The base price of the 2021 Bentley Flying Spur is $199,725. My test car costs $265,000. $565. For those that are interested, I included detailed specifications including dimensions, fuel economy, and options in the description. All right, let's take a look around the car. It is early spring in Michigan, which means the color green starts sprouting all over. And why not start with the Barnado green of this 2021 Bentley Flying Spur V8 with a very very lovely flying bee shining and flying in front absolutely love it i think this is just a stunning stunning car i mean the detail in the headlights and just the overall presence this car holds is really something to behold and take in this car is riding on the larger 22 inch wheels you can also get 20 and 21 inch wheels funny that that's the smallest wheel you can get is a 20 inch this particular car has some wonderful detail in this subtle but beautiful carbon fiber lower spoiler lip and then there's also carbon fiber along the side skirts here and at the back of that is a really beautiful detail right in the carbon fiber also, in case you forget, it is a V8. I hope that you do remember that though. And then in back, another beautiful, also subtle piece of carbon fiber to act as a small spoiler. The back of the car is just as stunning as the front, really. You've got these gorgeous dual exhaust quad tips right here, and those are all real baby there is nothing fake about those guys and i absolutely love it and again there's another piece of carbon fiber hanging out down low yes it is a bentley it never says flying spur on it but you don't really need to know that do you this particular car has the panoramic glass roof and there's more to see about that inside there's a nice detail here in the side skirts this car really does have show-stopping presence and it's worth taking a second look and why don't we take a look inside now we're going to look at one of the finest interiors out there today and of course as we open this door when we close it it is a soft closed door so you're going to hear a little whirring as it closes shut but just take a look at the door here look at the detail look at the thick beautiful leather and the stitching and the wood and the metal detail, the door handles, the windows, everything about it is just thick, beautiful, high quality materials. Of course, Bentley, Crew England, all of it extend to the seat. I mean, even the anchor of the chair, 
And of course you have a bevy of options here, massage, all sorts of lumbar and bolstering support. The seat itself is also beautifully stitched with a thick, comfortable headrest. The Bentley logo embroidered into the top, beautiful cross stitching. And of course that extends onto the steering wheel, which is just more of the same, lots of elegance. And then you'll see here across the dash into the center console is this beautiful veneer of wood and it just runs across from the driver to the passenger side. But start the car. And there is the center console touch screen. It's very big, easy to use, all those things. But let's say you're not in the mood to look at a digital screen. You're feeling a little bit old school for the day. Well, touch screen, and you have these beautiful dials to give you ambient temperature, compass, and a chrono for, you know, when you're on the track in this car, because why not? I absolutely love it. It's called the Bentley Rotating Display. It is a 6,200 and I think $15 option. And to me, it's absolutely worth every penny because there's just such a grand elegance to having analog options to look at when you're in this car. Obviously, there's still plenty of tech, no matter what, and options to use. And everything opens gracefully and slowly and softly. The instrument cluster is in fact a screen. There's not much you can do about that, but it is a very beautiful screen. They did a really good job here. And with some of these options, of course, you've got heated seats, you've got inductive phone charging, and then you've also got different things for privacy. I'm gonna flick this button right here, but let me turn my camera this way first. One click of a button closes all those things. And I can open them again. But if you'd rather just deal with the sunroofs, moonroofs, that's up here. So I can have the front opener close from here. And then I can also open close whatever I need to do. Bentley, just in general, is all about having choice in options. I mean, even just on the home screen, just as an example, mood lighting color, tire pressures just to know, date and time, and massage. Why not? That's just on the home screen. That's just one section. And that's independent of all these other buttons and controls I have. There's so much to go over here and I feel like if I tried to dig into it, I'd just be scratching at the surface. So let's go ahead and take it for a drive. Hi everyone. Clearly this is a special car for me to be in and it feels like a bit of an occasion to be in it. And being a special occasion, I decided to actually shave and comb my hair. Ah, how crazy is that? And why is it special? Well, it's not just that it's an expensive luxury car. Obviously it is that, but there is really something unique and special about spending time inside a Bentley. They really put a lot of effort into just giving the interior a richness and quality of calm and relax and, uh, just uniqueness that I've just I've just not felt in other cars and you really have to take a moment and just celebrate that fact and appreciate it because not only is it nice to do but that in of itself you know kind of lowers your blood pressure a little bit calms you down because you're like god this is this is a moment to relish so you kind of live in the moment which is you know a good thing for you right and 
obviously it's not just that it's special it's also really well done it's beautiful in here i love the stitching i love the leather and the wood and i love the combination of new technology and old like analog feel you know i absolutely adore the fact that you can get proper analog gauges to look at i mean a compass right that just feels proper in this car and i love the looks of the car outside as well you know it's got real presence i mean it's literally very big you know nearly 210 inches long the wheelbase is over 125 inches nearly 126 inches and it's over 5,000 pounds and this is the lighter of the two cars that weighs over 5,000 pounds and it's the lighter of two cars because this is powered by a four liter twin turbocharged v8 as opposed to a w12 which is a six liter 12 cylinder engine um, with three banks instead of two. And the W12 makes monster, monster power, 626 horsepower, 664 pound feet of torque. But this V8 is no slouch, 542 horsepower, 568 pound feet of torque. So clearly this engine is no slouch. And on top of that, it's a much lighter engine. This car weighs 100 kilograms less than the W12 version. And that's 100 kilograms out of the nose of the car, out of the front. That's over 220 pounds less weight you're moving. So even though it is significantly less power, it is also less weight. So the overall reduction in power to weight, weight to power, isn't so bad. Zero to 60 in this car is in four seconds flat, and that's versus 3.7 seconds in the W12. Now, top speed, you do get hurt just a little bit more, but you're still talking about 198 miles an hour, <laughs> which is not slow. And that's instead of 207 in the W12. But I must admit that the W12's top speed of 207 is governed. What does four seconds flat feel like in a 5,100 pound, 210 inch long sedan from Britain? Well, let's, let's find out. Briefly slowing down. And a uh, little foot on the gas. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Zero to 60 doesn't take long. <laughs> Zero to 60 in four seconds flat means that you have a lot of time to keep going faster if you'd like. In fact, this car will hit 100 miles an hour in under 10 seconds, 8.9 seconds. It's not slow. <laughs> now, what's interesting about this, obviously luxury takes priority in just about every aspect of this car, but you do have a darn decent amount of performance. Think about the fact that we have a dual clutch transmission, not an eight speed automatic. Dual clutch transmissions usually can shift a little bit faster than automatic transmissions. But the flip side of that is they're not quite as smooth with engagement. So you'd think that a car that leans luxury like this would go automatic instead of leaning performance um, with the dual clutch. But Bentley chose to do it. Now, I do know that the engineers worked really hard to make this dual clutch as smooth as possible. But even with all that work, there are areas where the dual clutch doesn't engage quite as smoothly as an automatic transmission would, um, you know, from zero speed, especially if you have to be a little bit aggressive or if you're in stop and go traffic and you need to be really light and have smooth engagements, especially going uphill. I mean, it's those circumstances where the smoothness of a torque converter can really pay dividends. All that said, they did do a really good job here. It's not imperceptible, but it's pretty close. And then you do get the advantages of a really crisp shifting dual clutch transmission, which, you know, is pretty great. It's like Bentley wants to lean a little bit heavier on its Le Mans winning history than it does in its, you know, uber luxury status. And I'm certainly not going to sweat that, even though the vast majority of its Le Mans winning history is getting close to 100 years ago now. <laughs> but there are other advantages to the fact that this is a much lighter car, and that comes in handling. The Bentley Flying Spur, the W12, weighs close to 5,500 pounds. It's 53, almost 5,400 pounds. This one weighs 5,137, according to Bentley. And all of that weight 
is taken off the front axle just about. That means that you have a much lighter front end, which means you have a much more willing to turn in front end, which means that despite the fact that this thing is as big as it is, it plays pretty darn well in uh, twisty roads. So this is where Bentley included a lot of technology that really helps this car. You've got a three chamber air spring system, which gives you options for spring rate and ride height and all those kinds of things. You have what's called Bentley Dynamic Ride, which is an electric uh, adjustable anti-roll bar system. So you can have soft um, anti-roll, uh, soft cushy roll bars when you want them, but it can stiffen up quite a bit when you wanna control the body more and not uh, roll around so much. And this car has four wheel steering as well, which is huge for a car of this size. So when you're in slow speed stuff, the, uh, the rear wheels will actually turn the opposite direction of the front to give you a smaller turning radius and effectively reduce the wheelbase. And then in higher speed, the car will, um, the rear wheels will turn the same direction as the front, which extensively, uh, which effectively extends the wheelbase. And again, the wheelbase is already nearly 126 inches. So the point is, despite the fact that you have as much luxury and accoutrement as you do in this car and the leather and the wood and everything else, you've got technology really helping you carve through some canyons if you want to do that, which is kind of crazy and kind of awesome, right? The fact of the matter is, this car drives a lot better than you'd ever expect it to, which gets to another good point. Bentley built this not to be a chauffeur-driven car. This is meant to be a driver, and you can feel that in the way it responds. I don't have some super soft, floaty steering wheel here. I've got good steering weight, I got pretty darn reasonable precision, and the body control is way better than you expect. I have good feel from the brakes, good response from the throttle. I mean, honestly, everything about this car is either competent or better than competent. And I think this is a good time to point out that Volkswagen owns Bentley, and Volkswagen also owns Audi and Porsche. And uh, the Bentley Flying Spur is built on the same platform that the Porsche Panamera is built on, which is obviously not a bad place to start if you want to have a good handling sports sedan. And Bentley has taken that foundation and have done some good things with this because this feels like a big Porsche Panamera. So, I don't know. This car is really, really, really expensive. Obviously, you can buy a house for a lot less than this. But, man, oh man, it's also really, really good. It's really luxurious, fun to drive, fast, gorgeous, inside and out. Just, just a lot to love here. Now, normally, this would be the time where I'd say, I'm Robin Warner, thank you for watching. And by the way, thank you for watching. But because this car is as big as it is and also offers as much luxury as it does, there's a little bit more I want to show you. All right, I am done driving the car for the day, but I am not done reviewing because uh, I want to show you the back of this Bentley Flying Spur. But I'll tell you what, let me uh, get the mood just a little right. I mean, the sun's kind of going right in the camera right now, so we got to do something about that, don't we? Why don't I just go ahead and grab the handheld remote here and put up all the blinds. Much, much better. I can do it individually or I can do it all at once. I can do whatever I want with this thing. This is the remote for the back. And to celebrate the fact that I'm back here, I've got a glass of sparkling white. It's lovely, and if I run out, it's okay, because I've got the cooler on, and, and I've got another bottle ready to go. Yeah, life is good. I want to relax a bit, so I would like to now get a massage. Do I want wave, pulse, stretch, lumbar, shoulder? You know, I think a good stretch would be nice. And oh, I want maximum intensity. Absolutely. 
just one of the many things that I can choose here. This rear command gives me access to so many different things. I have uh, the seats, of course, but I have all these kinds of things, this big menu of stuff to look at. And with that, I have tons of control. But let's stick with the basics right now. I'm getting a seat massage, but I'm feeling a little upright. So let's go ahead and fix that. Oh man, and this pillow top headrest really is something. This is one of the most comfortable places I've been in in a while. morning yeah it was uh, so comfortable in here I decided to just spend the night and I slept like a baby and overnight I was thinking about a couple questions is this car worth the money I mean it's a lot of money <laughs> there's no two ways about it but it's not necessarily how much money this car costs as opposed to what amount of disposable income you'd have to spend to have a car like this. And I mean amount by percentage. How much of a percentage of your disposable income would it take to get one of these? And if you're in a place where it's not a big hit on your disposable income, yeah, this thing is worth it. The combination of performance and luxury and comfort and customization and I mean that in the sense of oh you can have the interior any which way you'd like the exterior options all the different colors and all this kind of stuff and even just all the different systems in the car that you can customize once you're already in I mean you know there's just so many options you have to be extremely privileged and lucky to even consider a car like this but if you are, I definitely would. Uh, I think you'd find yourself quite happy, quite comfortable, and maybe sleepy from time to time. I'm Robin Warner. Thank you for watching.